Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on dermatological diseases, mucocutaneous lesions, immunologic disorders. My name is Dr. Lahari Telang and I'm from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology from Penang International Dental College. So the learning outcomes would be to define certain dermatoses like macule, papule, nodule, plaque, fissure, etc. And also to explain etiology, clinical features, diagnosis and management of PEM figures, erythema multiforme, lupus erythematosus and ectodermal dysplasia. So some of these we have covered previously in other topics, so the others would be covered in this uh, lecture series. Alright, so when you're talking about examination of a lesion, a dermatological lesion or oral lesion, we first classify them as primary and secondly, secondary lesions. And we will be looking at certain um, lesions today and how we go about defining them. So if this is your normal mucosa in the histopathological section, you see the epithelium as well as um, and the connective tissue. And this is the epidermis. Um, it is very similar to the epithelium and it's just that there is a horny layer and a granular cell layer which is a lot more thicker in comparison to the epithelium inside the oral mucosa. So what is a lesion? A lesion is a pathological alteration of the tissue. It can be a superficial growth or patch of skin or mucosa. Now that's the important part here that the term lesion is used for any pathologic alteration either on the skin or the mucosa and that does not resemble the area surrounding it. So you can obviously use the word lesion to describe anything that is abnormal on the skin or the mucosa. Now, lesions can be grouped into two categories, primary and secondary. Primary are the ones which are the initial manifestation of a lesion. For example, they are present at birth, like birthmarks or moles, or could be acquired during a person's lifetime. For example, infectious diseases like warts, acne, psoriasis, or allergic reaction like hives or contact dermatitis, or environmental agents like sunburn, pressure, or temperature extremes. Secondary lesions, on the other hand, are skin changes or mucosal changes that result from the primary lesions, either as a natural progression of the lesion or as a result of a person's manipulation. For example, you scratch um, an acne and it turns out to become a pustule or an ulcer. All right, so that is the difference between a primary and a secondary lesion. So this is the entire list of the primary lesions that can be seen uh, on the skin and some of them can be seen in the oral cavity, in the oral mucosa as well. So let's look through these uh, one by one. Macule. This is the circumscribed flat area less than 1 cm in size, discoloration without elevation or depression of the surface relative to the surrounding skin. So examples for macules on the skin would be moles, freckles and nevi. And this is an example of an oral melanotic macule which is seen on the labial mucosa. Papule is a circumscribed elevated solid lesion less than 1 cm in size. Example is a wart, elevated mole, measles or a papular oral lichen planus. That's the one you can see in the image. Patch is a circumscribed area of discoloration greater than 1 cm that is either elevated or depressed relative to the surrounding skin. So it's in, in effect, it's a larger macule. For example, port wine stains, cafe au lait spots, as well as vitiligo, which you can see in the image here. Plaque, on the other hand, is a well-circumscribed, elevated, superficial, solid lesion greater than 1 cm in diameter. Example would be a homogeneous leukoplakia in the oral cavity or psoriasis of the skin. A vesicle is a small superficial circumscribed elevation of the skin less than 0.5 cm in size that contains serous fluid. Example, chicken pox, herpes zoster, pem figures. Now examples that you're seeing here is herpes labialis at the angle of the mouth or herpes zoster lesion on the skin. Bulla, a plural of which is bullae, Bulla is a raised circumscribed lesion greater than 0.5 cm that contains serous fluid. So bullae are essentially larger vesicles. 
Example, spend figures, blisters or burns. Now, uh, in the oral cavity, bullae um, do not last for long because they are thin walled and then they rupture leaving tissue tags or an ulcerated surface like the one you can see in the uh, vestibular mucosa in this picture. Nodule is a palpable solid lesion, deep seated, less than 1 cm in diameter. These are usually found in the dermal or subcutaneous tissue and the lesion may be above, in level width or below the skin surface. An example of a nodule would be a lipoma or a fibroma and this is an example of a thyroid nodule seen in the um, picture below here around the neck region of the patient. In the oral cavity nodule could be like uh, we just discussed uh, within the mucosal uh, tissue or slightly above or below the mucosal surface just like in the skin. This is an example of a nodule which could be a, a lipoma or even a mucosal within the uh, um, labial mucosa of the patient. Tumor on the other hand is a solid firm lesion greater than one centimeter that can be above in level width or beneath the skin surface also known as a mass or a growth. So these terms can be used interchangeably Example would be a neoplasm. So the word tumor doesn't really essentially indicate that it is cancerous. It could be benign or malignant or even a hemangioma for example. So this is an example of a tumor inside the oral cavity uh, as well as a tumor on the face of a child. Pustule is a small, generally less than 1 cm in diameter, circumscribed superficial elevation of the skin that is filled with purulent material. It can also be described as a fascicle filled with pus. Example are acne or impetigo, which is because of um, bacterial infection of the skin. A cyst is a body cavity which may or may not be lined by epithelium. It is fluid filled, um, generally filled with liquid, semi-solid or gaseous consent. On the skin, an example would be a dermoid cyst or a thyroglossal cyst. Other cysts in the oral cavity are covered elsewhere in the, in the subject. Telangiectasias are fine irregular red lines produced by capillary dilatation. Example rose AC or spider nevi like the one you see in the picture here. Purpura, <clears throat> any of the several bleeding disorders characterized by hemorrhage into the tissues, particularly beneath the skin or mucous membrane, producing ecchymosis or petechiae. So the term purpura actually combines the term ecchymosis or petechiae which are petechiae are smaller bleeding spots and ecchymosis are larger bleeding spots or bleeding areas. Example is thrombocytopenia. So the picture that you're seeing here are that of petechiae on the skin as well as on the uh, soft palatal mucosa. Veal is a transient circumscribed elevated a papule or a plaque often with erythematous borders and pale center. This happens because of an insect bite, urticaria or allergic rash. Let's move on to secondary lesions. You can see a list of secondary lesions here. So I will be covering few of them and most of them are seen on the skin. Few of them can be seen even in the oral cavity. Scale are visible fragments of uh, stratum corneum as is shed from the skin. Example, flaking of skin due to seborrheic dermatitis, dry skin, dandruff are all examples of scale. Scar is thin to thick fibrous tissue that replaces normal skin following injury or laceration to the dermis. Example, a heel wound or surgical incision. Now, generally scars are less likely to be seen within the oral cavity on the oral mucosa, reason being the oral mucosa has a high turnover rate and that, that does not allow scar formation to take place very easily. Keloid is an irregular shaped elevated or progressively enlarging scar that grows beyond the boundaries of the wound. So this is an example of a keloid formation after surgery of the maxillofacial area. Ulcer a break or discontinuity of the surface epithelium caused by molecular degeneration of cells such that a punched out area exists. There could be various examples of ulcers seen on the skin as well as the oral mucosa. On the skin you could see diabetic ulcers or traumatic uh, or malignant ulcers but aphthous ulcers for example are very uh, exclusively seen in the oral mucosa. Erosion is loss of superficial layers of upper epithelium or dermis by wearing away as from friction or pressure. 
Now, this is an example of erosive lichen planus in the picture that you can see on the gingiva, as well as candidiasis caused by dentures stomatitis in the uh, candidiasis as well as a bacterial infection together combination causing dentures stomatitis and erosion of the mucosa on the palatal aspect in the image with uh, showing you the denture bearing area. Atrophy is thinning of skin or mucosal surface, for example, aged skin or, for example, chronic atrophic candidiasis, where you can see on the dorsum of the tongue, there is visible loss of uh, papillae and atrophy of the tongue. A fissure is a sharply defined linear or wedge-shaped tears in the epidermis with abrupt walls. Examples, corner, cracks at the corner of the mouth are generally called as angular keenitis. Crustes can be of varying colors of liquid debris, serum or pus that has dried on the surface of the skin. Uh, for example, a scab on a wound or abrasion. Sinus is a cavity or channel permitting the escape of purulent material. Example, a sinus tract from chronic periapical collapses like the one you see in the image here. And a fistula is an abnormal passage between an internal organ to the body surface or between two internal organs. Example would be a thyroglossal fistula or the one you're seeing here because of osteomyelitis. Excoriation are exclusively seen on the skin. These are skin abrasions, usually superficial due to scratching of the skin. So when you're talking about examination of a lesion, it's important to look at the site, size, number of the lesions, shape, surface color, margin or edge. And palpation should consist of tenderness, consistency of the lesion as well as surrounding areas. So description of a lesion can have multiple terminology that we uh, can use while describing it. And especially in dermatology as well as in oral medicine, when you're describing a lesion, we use terms like the following. So let me just explain to you some of these using pictures. Acuminate, for example, is this lesion that you're seeing here is a condyloma acuminata, which you can see and the word acuminate is used to um, refer to a pointed surface. Bulbous, on the other hand, it can be referring to anything rounded and this is, for example, a palatine torus. Dome-shaped, this is, for example, a mucosal which appears dome-shaped in the oral mucosa. Filiform or thread-like are examples of filiform papillae, for example, seen on a black hairy tongue. Pedunculated is having a stalk. This is, for example, a parotid papilla. You could also see other pedunculated lesions in the oral cavity. Sessile is without a stalk. For example, fibroma, which is have occurring on the oral mucosa and doesn't have a stalk. Herpetiform is the word used to describe multiple lesions which coalesce to form a larger appearing lesion. For example, herpes simplex here where you have multiple vesicles which join together or coalesce to form a larger uh, area of involvement. Umbilicated is with a central depression. For example, the one which you are seen on red cells or the lesion that is here. Vericus or warty cauliflower-like appearance or a broccoli-like appearance seen on, on the varicose carcinoma image here. We have other terminology also that can be used for describing a little larger lesions and these are annular or ring-like for example seen in geographic tongue or annular erythema uh, which can be seen on skin. Discoid or con-like coin like like for example discoid lupus erythematosus L linear we can see in linear marginal gingivitis or lichen planus of the nails for example <clears throat> reticular or lace like is a net like appearance that is seen in uh, reticular lichen planus for example serpiginous or snake like more often seen on the skin uh, for example of a hookworm infestation here Target-like lesions or targetoid lesions or iris-like lesions, uh, classical for eridema multiforme. Uh, that brings me to the end of this description. I hope you have gained from it. These are the references I have used. Thank you.